Hello, welcome to session seven and the first in our module exploring consensus research. Now, in the next three weeks, we're going to be looking at a range of different processes for conducting research using a technique that involves developing a consensus, um, an agreement around various issues. So this week, we're going to look at the three main approaches to consensus research and a particular tool that we're going to be using for your own consensus research as part of your next portfolio item. So let's get into the first technique, which is the nominal group approach. So generally speaking, there's three main approaches, the nominal group approach, uh, consensus development panels and the Delphi technique. Now, these each have different advantages and disadvantages, and we're going to discuss these briefly. But the main approach we'll be using for your assessment will be the Delphi technique, and it is certainly the most commonly used approach. But that said, the other approaches you may find more practical in your own employment settings uh, for conducting your own research with um, small groups of experts that you wish to develop a consensus around various issues. So the first of these approaches is called the nominal group approach or the nominal group process. Now, essentially you get together a group of experts um, like in a panel, and this would generally be between say five and 10 um, experts and they then go through a process of coming up with some sort of agreement around a challenge or an issue that you present them. So it's moderated, you have someone controlling the process, and they then go through several rounds of consensus building. So in the first round, or the first phase, they are asked to generate an idea or a solution to a problem. Um, and sometimes they're given literature and resources to assist them with this. And the idea is that each individual comes up with a solution to that problem. Sometimes it's also done in small groups, um, but the idea is to develop a range of solutions to the issue or challenge that has been presented. Now, it may be an issue such as what is the most significant educational technology that will be impacting their organization in the next five years? And the idea would be to come up with what they feel is the most significant. But there can be a whole range of other issues that they could be exploring. Then during the second round, everyone submits their ideas and the moderator presents their solutions to the group as a whole, but anonymously. So you don't know who has uh, put forward the idea that everyone puts forward has their idea presented. Now the third phase is then a discussion moderated by the moderator um, around the various possible solutions and the idea is then in the fourth phase that um, the participants will rank the ideas to determine which one they feel is the best idea to go forward with. So that's the approach provided in this technique to come up with a consensus as to which is the best approach. Now, everyone gets to put forward their idea. Um, they have a discussion around the various positives and negatives of those ideas, and then they vote on which idea to progress. So it is useful. It relies upon experts and tries to reduce the outside influence on uh, their opinions because it's done anonymously. So each expert can put forward their ideas free from potential ridicule and um, things of that nature. So they can put forward quite contentious ideas. And it's relatively um, time efficient. You've got everyone together for a set amount of time, a set process, and they work through relatively quickly to come up with a consensus 
and develop a solution to whatever's being explored. Now, there are some disadvantages, though. Um, it can be complex. The moderator has to be on their toes. When you get lots of experts in a room together, um, a lot of them have very... Uh, they, they can express their opinions forcefully. Um, and it's important to try to anonymize the process so that those that have the greatest reputation or the most forceful in putting forward their ideas don't sway others simply by the force of their personality or their reputation or any of the other issues that could be introduced. Now, it's also not particularly collaborative. While there is a phase where they do work together to try to come up with the consensus, um, a lot of it is done individually initially, and the idea is then presented, and then there is that collaboration process and then that voting process. Um, it has another limitation in that it only works for reasonably small groups. Um, generally, it needs to be more than five, or at least five, uh, in order to there be a sufficient number of views. If you have too few number of views, it's really just then a, a debate or a competition between um, sort of the predominant ideas. But it's also if there's too many, more than 10, it starts getting very unwieldy. Just the time taken to present all of the ideas and to discuss them all. If there's too many ideas being presented, then a lot of them are then ignored um, and just sort of, yeah, it just needs to be manageable in terms of the processes involved. Um, it also tends to be limited in that it's the experts in themselves can introduce um, homogeneity. Um, because they're experts, they've achieved that expert status by being acknowledged in their profession, um, often by their peers. So it's a fairly homogenous group in that there's not a lot of outliers and not a lot of really weirdos and strange ideas being introduced because they're not in invited to be participants in the process. Um, so some of those really outlier ideas may be the best, but because it is a moderating uh, process where the most uh, mainstream ideas generally get presented, uh, it does limit the opportunity for out-of-the-box ideas to be introduced. Okay, so just in summary, um, there needs to be a clear question that the group is trying to come up with a solution to. So it's not really good for exploratory processes. There needs to be something very focused around what they're trying to come up with a consensus on. The panel size needs to be between five and 10. Um, ideally, there should be some heterogeneity introduced. So you, um, you invite experts that uh, have very strongly different opinions or come from different perspectives on the position being explored. And it does allow for reasonable reproducible results. Um, the group, by going through that decision-making process whereby they discuss things, we can see how that actual consensus evolves. Not all the techniques make that transparent. Um, but this technique does provide researchers with a good way of understanding how the consensus actually came about. Okay, so the next approach is again a panel of experts, but uses a slightly different um, philosophy and approach to developing the consensus. So consensus development panels or consensus um, development conferences are uh, meetings where experts come together and again try to come up with a consensus around the various issues or topics or problems uh, being explored. So this is often used when trying for organizations trying to come up with strategic plans where you get together all of your leaders or, or the heads of departments for example in a school and they come up with a strategic plan for the organization as to where to progress things in the next few years what the priorities should be, um, where there should be cuts, where there should be a focus, things of that nature. So again, because it's face-to-face, -face, there are some advantages 
to this process whereby there is that interaction and interactivity between the experts. Um, and in this case, the ideas are owned and made public by the participants. Um, so, well, we'll get to that in a sec, but the other aspect around this particular approach is that it's relatively new in terms of the research literature. There's not a lot of um, uh, studies conducted on how effective this approach is compared to the uh, other consensus methods, particularly the Delphi method, which has been researched extensively over many decades. But because the participants do present their ideas publicly um, and not anonymously, there is a disadvantage in that um, strong personalities and reputations can dominate perspectives. And also that some people may be hesitant to put forward ideas because they feel that they're new to the field or they're a new employee or a new manager um, and they don't want to get um, superiors offside by arguing against them. Things of those issues which can be negatives when we're trying to build a consensus of, of opinion. So generally again the group should be made up of experts and um, it should be also acknowledged why they've been selected. So the biases that can be um, exhibited by the panel can be at least acknowledged somewhat and mediated against. Um, if you're only choosing all males, um, it may be just that there's no female department heads. So that may have been the reason why that was chosen, but that should be acknowledged and then recognized as a source of potential bias. Um, again, the size is problematic. Um, it shouldn't really be outside of eight to 12, um, too few, and you don't get enough um, ideas and just, um, diversity of opinions. Too many, it starts becoming unwieldy and problematic in that respect. And again, in this approach, because the opinions and um, discussions can be made public and so forth, we can collect data on that and develop, use some statistical processes to address how people have made decisions around how they've developed their consensus. Okay, so those two models rely upon getting groups into a room, going through a process, um, the first one was a bit more rigorous in terms of its structure. Second one, uh, more free-flowing, uh, but more open in that everyone puts forward their ideas and argues their ideas and tries to build that consensus around their ideas. Now, the Delphi technique is different from these um, two. Um, it's again a process of having experts, um, and it relies strongly on anonymity. Now, the idea was developed by the RAND Corporation, which is a research think tank in the United States um, at the end of World War II. Of course, they were having difficulty deciding upon their strategic direction um, with regard to what to do with various foreign policies and military processes. And there was lots of people with lots of different ideas, but it was difficult to have a consensus that they could take to government and say, this is what we feel should be done. So they developed this approach called the Delphi approach. And it's related, it's named from the, from the Oracle of Delphi, which is a very wise um, oracle in um, ancient times, which gave advice to the kings of Greece as to what they should do. Um, okay, so the idea of the Delphi process is to make sure that all the participants are actively involved, um, that they can have honest opinions without fear of repercussions. And to achieve that, they use a process of an anonymity so that no one knows what ideas and votes are being done by any other participant. Indeed, they may not know um, who the other participants are in the Delphi study. So it was fundamentally based around a questionnaire. Um, and the idea was that the experts would answer a questionnaire and generally it would be around answering a question or developing a ranked list or of options, things of that nature. The results of which would then be collected and then analyzed and um, formatted and then presented back to the experts 
as to what was the first round of um, consensus. And then using that first round of consensus, they then considered the questions again, um, now knowing what the majority thinks about various issues, and then re-rank or readdress the question and come up with a second round of consensus. And often that will then um, knock off a few of the ones that people aren't particularly interested in. So you get a narrowing down of views and then it may go to a third round. Um, the idea is to eventually come up with a clear consensus as to what the group feels is the most um, significant response or most important response or most likely, likely correct response to whatever question is being researched. Now, there are various modifications on this process, um, and they're called the modified Delphi approach, and there's lots of different ways that can be modified and explored. Of course, this has been around for 50 years, so lots and lots of researchers and studies have used this approach and have tried different variations and combinations of it. But at its foundation, it still relies upon this basic structure. You have a round of um, decision making, um, analysis of those decisions, then it's presented back to the experts, then they have a second round, the researchers again analyze the results of that, it's fed back to the experts, and they have another round and feedback. Now often it only goes two rounds, um, but sometimes it can go three or even four or five, but generally consensus can be achieved after the second round. Okay, so just an example of one where we're looking at the curriculum issues um, using a modified Delphi technique. In this case, um, it may be how much time should we allocate to the different subjects in terms of the curriculum allocation times of discretionary time in a classroom. So we'll have an extra 20 hours per semester for maths and 15 hours for English and 10 hours for technology and five hours for geography, that sort of decision making process. Then the second round um, is modifies this and it, and it really introduces a new question, which is to look at what are the most important uh, knowledge, attitudes and skills that will be achieved from that mix of allocations um, from the first round. So it's really doing two Delphi studies in one. So it's a bit of a it's, it's a very much of a modification of the processes. Uh, and there's lots of modifications that can be achieved around the Delphi technique. Um, but the idea of it all is to make sure that everyone can contribute their ideas, uh, or at least contribute their um, their votings on various ideas, and that they won't be influenced by other members of the panel. Um, so there's various advantages to this, uh, but also some drawbacks. Uh, main advantage, as I said, is it reduces the influence by um, certain personalities um, over the decision making processes. Um, but there's also a lack of feedback, uh, there's also a lack of collaboration. Um, there's no discussion around the issues, which does limit the process. Some modified Delphi techniques do allow discussion. Um, but the, the pure Delphi approach doesn't have um, that to and fro discussion that we've seen in those previous techniques. Um, the other key th aspect of the Delphi technique is that it is improved by having more participants. Um, indeed, smaller than six is considered uh, too few again, but having more than 12 is not a problem. Research has shown it doesn't necessarily um, improve the process significantly. Uh, once you've got sort of 10 to 12 experts, having more experts um, generally doesn't introduce that many new ideas. Of course, the main ideas around a particular topic, the main options, will be achieved within that range of participants. But you can have hundreds of participants in a Delphi process without it really affecting the complexity and the um, difficulty of the of the of the um, Delphi technique. So, you're going to be doing a Delphi um, technique 
uh, in the tutorials um, using a tool we're going to discuss in a bit. And it will then show you this process in a bit more detail and how you'll be able to apply this technique, the Delphi technique, in your own study, in your own workplace or with your own um, colleagues or friends and family to achieve a consensus. So, again, as a summary for the Delphi technique, um, it needs to be driven by experts. Uh, you can't generally have non-experts as part of the process because they do have to have a valid, um, a valid contribution that they're making. Now, for your assignment, you don't have to use true experts in a field, um, but they should have some informed knowledge of the question that you're going to be asking them to develop a consensus on. Again, panel size should be between 6 and 11. Um, there should at least be two rounds. Um, and there's, again, a reasonable opportunity for statistical analysis because there's um, some reasonably rigorous uh, data being collected through the process. Okay, so with the advent of technology, though, we can start doing these particularly survey-based um, approaches like the Delphi technique more efficiently and effectively using digital technologies. Now, one of the techniques and technologies we're going to use is a process to assist with what's called co-joint analysis. Um, this is a uh, technique used by marketing initially to um, allow participants doing a survey to do it more efficiently and more interactively. And the idea is that you present pairs of options and the person doing the survey chooses between two options. So let's say trying to do a survey, determine what sort of automobiles they like. So they would be presented with a Ferrari and a BMW. Which one would they prefer? Then they might be presented with a Ferrari and an Audi. Then an Audi and a Mercedes. And they would continue with that process of being shown pairs and they would make their choice between the two options. But in a relatively short amount of time, by choosing between those options, it develops up a effective data set and the statistics is done by the tool to then rank the options that have been um, chosen from by the participants. Um, the mathematics behind it does get a little bit involved, but you don't have to worry yourself about that. Um, it's simply a, a, and a nice, simple, easy way of going about achieving a ranked order of options. And for participants, they find it quite um, engaging because they, it's simply a matter of choice between two options, rather than if you give them a list of 10 and they've got to rank them in order, um, which can be more confronting. It does mean they've got to have a number of interactions, but generally it can be done much quicker than other ranking processes. So they might go through 30 choices very quickly, um, simply making that initial gut feeling as to which one they prefer. So we're going to use the tool All Our Ideas, which is a web-based tool for doing co-joint analysis. And you're, for your assignment, you're going to um, identify 10 participants and invite them to use the tool, it's a website, and they'll make, I suggest, 30 responses. So make 30 um, uh, choices between pairs. Uh, now, we'll go through more about the assessment task in the tutorials and how to structure your all their ideas. But we're also going to be doing a practice one to take you through the processes. Here's an example of one. In this case, um, in New York, they were trying to decide um, where to focus their attention in order to make it a greener city. And they were presented with a range of options. Um, there's also the option of I can't decide if they want to, if they can't validly make a choice between a pair and then it will ignore that pairing. Now, in this case, they also allow them to have the option of adding their own ideas. 
And this can be an effective tool for generating a whole lot of ideas by allowing the participants to contribute their ideas, as we would do in a Delphi study. Now, for your assignment, you're not going to do that. Um, for the practice run, you will do it. So in the practice um, uh, co-joint analysis, uh, you're going to be adding your own ideas and it will add to the mix of ideas that have been contributed in the past by other students. And then you'll make some, um, do some votes around the possible um, options being presented to rank in order um, the educational technologies that are going to impact. But for the assignment, um, you're going to uh, develop a list of ideas that the participants vote between. Okay, so as I said, the idea of the uh, co-joint analysis is to create a ranked list of responses to a question or problem or issue that you've presented the participants. So this is sort of how the data is then presented. Um, these are the ideas that have been presented. You can see that there's several um, dozen pages of these ideas, but they're then ranked. So here, the top ranked one was continue enhancing bike lanes uh, within the city in order to green the city, but it would then progress down. And what would often happen in these sorts of um, analysis is that the top five issues would be then presented. And when we looked at the future studies, you would have seen that coming about through the various reports around the top educational technologies, which generally use similar processes to these to develop a consensus around what the experts felt or the panels felt were the most significant educational technology issues or challenges or opportunities that exist. So in weeks eight and nine, we'll be going through the practice Delphi study. Um, and for your portfolio assignment for your Delphi study, you're going to be choosing 10 participants to then rank or to answer the, the co-joint survey questions, which will result in a ranking of the options that you've provided them. So when you use the co-joint um, or, or your ideas co-joint analysis tool, uh, when you go in to create the um, survey, you'll put in your research question. Now you need to be careful about the question because it needs to be such that the pairs of options relate to the question. So essentially, the research question is asking which of the options is the best for something or the most significant or the most important. Um, you'll then generate a link. You can then edit the link so to make it a little bit more um, understandable to your question. And you'll then put your 10 responses. Remembering these are going to be presented as pairs, as alternatives in answering the research question. So you need to think about how that's structured. The other thing is in the um, options section then, you'll need to make sure that you, uh, one sec. I'll just fix this up one moment. Okay, we'll go through that in the tutorials, but the you also need to go into the options section and uncheck the option to allow participants to add their own ideas for your for the one that you'll do for your assessment. So that's it for this session. So we've looked at the three main uh, consensus making tools or approaches. Um, looked in a bit more detail at the Delphi approach as a method of uh, conducting these through a survey and the anonymity of that survey through a number of rounds and the use of the co-joint uh, tool to enable that to happen a little bit more efficiently through the use of online technologies. 
So the your Delphi survey, you'll be doing two rounds of the co-joint survey. Um, so you'll come up with your question and provide your participants with 10 possible options. They'll make a decision around those options. You'll then look at the responses. Um, they'll be ranked for you and you'll present that ranking back to your participants. They'll then go through the same question and responses again for the second round and vote again. And that will ideally develop a, a more informed consensus based upon the consensus achieved in the first round. So that's consensus research and how we utilize it in educational technologies. And we'll be exploring these in more detail over the next two weeks as we look at how to analyze the results of such um, consensus techniques and develop this as a research methodology. I'll see you in the tutorials.